Thanks for joining us, and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. Periodically, we'll bring you true stories of angelic encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. When we come back, we'll begin our next episode. Hello again, and welcome back to the Watchman on the Wall podcast. In today's episode, Stan Johnson gives his commentary and an overview of all of the Dana Coverstone dreams. I think he studied these dreams quite a bit, along with the other prophecies that he's done over the years. I think one of the things that interests me is the fact that the calendar dreams may not have been from 2020, but may be relative to us today. So... Here now is Stan Johnson with his commentary and an overview of all the Dana Coverstone dreams. Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topic today is Coverstone dreams and 40 more years. So let's start with a Coverstone dream dated December 2020. Now, the point I'm trying to say here is that some things he's got, some things he missed, But as you get a little bit older and more mature understanding these dreams, you'll understand that some dreams, like, for example, the words given to Dimitri Dudman, they are prophecies. God is saying, this will come, period. You can't stop it. But most, if not all, of the dreams given to Coverstone, in my opinion, are warning dreams. They are prayer topics. They're saying, this is coming. This is headed your way. You've got an accident about to happen around the corner. You need to look because there's a car coming to the right, and if you don't slow down or you don't put on the brakes, you're going to hit that car. There are warning dreams. Some of them have come to pass. Some of them have come to pass softened. Some are just delayed. So that's what we're going to look at today. So this is December 2020. I saw visions. I saw people marching, protest, wearing masks, saw long lines, going to the hospitals, typical medical doctors, needle syringes, people on ventilators. So who would have thought all the way back in December 2020 that we would have people on ventilators? Nobody was thinking that. I saw newspaper headlines, people getting sick, ambulances flying down the roads, cities on fire. So he was told this is coming, didn't know to pray, and it arrived. I saw people with their fists in the air, yelling, screaming, angry at the world. Courthouses, state houses surrendered. That happened. People who are mad at the world, guns, shotguns, held above the air, above their heads, barriers within cities. That happened. I'm sorry. He says, this is June 22, 2020. But the U.S. man is no longer making currency, making change like pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters. What do you mean? They stopped minting them. He went on to, was told, prepare for hyperinflation and just charge $2. We are only in the early phases of seeing the hyperinflation start now. But he was told, this is back in June of 2020. Then, June 22 of 2020 again, he says, I saw businesses shuttered, closed, schools closed. Now, we saw some school closed. As a matter of fact, that's a major battle going on right now. The DOJ is saying that we're going to start coming after these parents that are creating disruptions, not going along with our critical race theory and things like that. So he saw this in advance, and apparently there wasn't very many people praying for it, and it arrived. I saw bank buildings with roofs being taken off, money flying out through the roof like a vacuum cleaner. We're only in the early phases of this coming about now. We've seen things get more expensive. We've not seen the death of the dollar yet, like Shane Warren was told, but we can certainly see it's just over the horizon. As we're driving down the road, if we look to the right, we see a car speeding. We see that we have a green light. We see that they are not going to be stopping at their red light, so we can see we're about to have an accident unless we pray. That's the point of the Coverstone Dreams. I saw the Oval Office in the White House. I saw nobody moving around. 
that's very unusual to think no one is in the White House. He saw it before it happened. But now, let me jump down. I was shown inside the actual Oval Office. The curtains pulled. No one was seated at the Resolute Desk. So, he saw it. No one prayed. No one knew to pray. No one saw a need to pray, and it came to pass. I saw fires everywhere. I saw people being rounded up. No, this has not happened. But again, we had a solemn September assembly in 2020. We had a solemn October assembly, and we just had another solemn September assembly in 2021. We've specifically prayed against this. And so far, we have not seen Chinese and Russian soldiers on American ground. We've not seen Russian soldiers telling the Chinese soldiers to go and pick up these people, round them up, secure this quadrant. We have not seen that. But see, that's the point of the Coverstone Dreams, is to try to, try to tell us, there's a car coming, they're going to run the red light, you're about to be broadsided unless you pray. But now we have been praying. I saw blue helmets. Haven't seen this. I saw military things taking place. I also saw no sign of the president. <clears throat> well... There are people that say that that has come to pass. That's probably all I should say. All right, let's skipping on down now. Now let's go July 25th. I clearly saw post office shutdowns with openings only a few days a week. Now, we haven't seen that. However, perhaps you missed this headline. Uh, UPS begins, USPS, excuse me, post office begins slowing down first class mail. Here's how it will affect the tri-state area. There's been other articles where the USPS is now saying we can no longer guarantee first class mail is going to fly like first class mail. There's going to be delays. He also saw greater violence in the streets, specifically saw federal buildings being burned to the ground. Well, we've seen fires. We've seen nasty words written on the federal buildings, but I'm not aware of any of them burning totally to the ground. My, my point is our prayers are working. Coverstone's dreams of warning are working. We're listening. We're making some changes. That's the point I'm trying to make at. That's good. I don't want to see the Coverstone dreams come to pass. I don't think you do either. Now, here's another one. August 10, 2020. I saw the $100 bill the size of a flag hanging on the flagpole burning on one corner. It was being lowered like a flag is being lowered at the end of the day. People had their hands over their hearts crying because the God of money was being lowered. The dollar had lost its value. Okay, that is in the early phases of happening. Starting August 24th of 2021, when the Saudi Arabia signed a new agreement saying that Russia is now going to protect him, that means that no longer crude oil has to be sold by dollars. Now, we've not seen the price of crude oil skyrocket too much. Yes, yes, I understand. It's going up. It hadn't gone up as much as we were expecting. We've also not seen the total death of the dollar yet. It's in the early phases. That's a good thing. But I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, our prayers, our prayers are working, but we got to keep them going. Many people celebrating, others are devastated, totally torn up by the death of the dollar. Now look, the value of the American dollar was dying, and I heard someone playing taps in the background. As of August 24th, you can start playing taps. <laughs> As of August 24th of 2021, the death of the dollar is now in progress. Then I saw small churches, small groups of people kneeling and praying. That's us. They were wrestling in prayer with the spirit of the age, kneeling and praying, people protected by bubbles of safety. And have you not seen the people that came to the solemn in October, September assemblies? Have you not seen people that are praying, that are believing this stuff? We're getting God's protection. Faithful core of the church had not been compromised in their values and their faith. They were being encouraged to stay strong. And that's the message of today, too. Stay strong, stand strong, keep preaching, praying, and believing. We can get the victory. And I've got a request here in just a minute. August 24th, 2020. I saw a calendar turn to the month of November. And it's also, uh, I saw shadows flickering all over it. And I saw a light in the sky, a very large, bright light than darkness. What would that be? What would the very bright light in the sky, followed by darkness, what would that be? Answer, my opinion, suitcase of nukes. I began to make out through the dawn's haze and the fog that many Americans were emergency shelters. Why were they emergency shelters? You know, in my lifetime, 
I've never seen anybody go to an emergency shelter. I've never been in an emergency shelter. I've never had to go underground for fear of anything, but he's saying it's coming. Now, again, a lot of this, look, just because it didn't happen in November 2020, don't think it's not coming. We've already been praying for a softening and a delay. So part of our prayers have been answered. We've not seen the suitcase nukes go off yet. Heavy on the word, yet. And, <laughs> all right, I, I tell you something else here. So I was praying, and the thought came to me, well, maybe I should just stop praying every day that the suitcase nukes will not go off. Boom, instantly. I got a yawn. No, 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 we must keep praying that those suitcase nukes do not go off. We do not want to see those go off. So, my brothers and sisters, we got to keep praying. On with the, the message, though. I began to make out through the dawn's haze and the fog that many Americans were in emergency shelters. There seemed to be snow on the ground. You see, Coverstone didn't know about the suitcase nukes. He didn't understand what he was saying. But you and I, we understand. We know. Snow on the ground it was dirty and gray, almost like ash. He even says the word ash. What is it called? It's called fallout, my brothers and sisters. It's called fallout. There were people huddled together and shivering. Why were they shivering? Because this is in November. Individuals were lying on cots, suitcases all over the place. Why suitcases? Because they grabbed their grab bags, what they could, a few clothes, and they ran to the emergency shelters. Why do they go to the emergency shelters? Because the suitcase nukes went off, and they were told to go to the emergency shelters because they didn't know if what there's not going to be more of them going off, you see. Desperate looks on the faces of most everyone encourages in the crowds. Who is that? Right here, right here, that's us, that's us, okay? Encouragers of the crowds, all wearing crosses, stood out emotionally from everyone else. Why? Because it didn't rock our, our world. It didn't scare us. We knew this was coming. We we're prepared. We've been getting prepared. I'm not talking about just food and things like that. I'm talking about here in our spirit. We've been getting prepared for years, my brothers and sisters. We are the soul winners. They had smiles on their faces. They're checking on people, trying to show patience and kindness. And sometimes they were met with anger, told to go away. We understand that. But they just kept doing what they were doing. Despite of the manifested upset, despite all the anger that sometimes they caused, they kept going. They kept praying. They kept trying to win souls. I saw headlines that said shock and awe in the U.S. Now, when have we heard of shock and awe? Uh, well, that would be back in what, March of 19, what was it? I forget the year, 03. You remember, remember when we started to go in to attack um, Saddam Hussein? Remember back those? They said, what's it going to look like? And the words were shock and awe. <laughs> of course, when we actually attacked, it wasn't shock and awe. But those are words specifically to the United States. And in other words, it's saying when these suitcase nukes go off, and they're not going to go off, we're going to pray they don't go off. The, the, well, what we would say is shock and awe. Again, we're going to pray that this is at least softened and delayed, if not prayed away. As well as another that read, UN steps in to help the host nation. We're praying that's not going to happen. Then the figure ap appeared, that's the angel that's talking to him, remain braced as this calm comes before gathering storm, that recovery will have a hard time finding. Remain braced as this calm comes before gathering storm, that recovery will have a far hard time finding. Why did it repeat? Because we have to understand, when it is a warning, it's said once. It's saying it may or may not come to pass. But when it said it twice, this one you can count on. So it's saying, stay ready, that there's going to be a gathering storm, but we're praying that the suitcase nukes won't be part of the storm. We understand the storm has to come, because that's what's going to get people to receive Jesus. Now, let's go to the next one. This is not the same one. I know it's going to sound similar. But again, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. So in that he got a second dream, pretty much saying the same thing, that tells us on this one, we better be praying really hard. September 4, 2020. I saw the calendar of December. And that, just to get to it, he says it's December that flipped over to January. The vision started. I saw long food lines. Why would there be food lines? It didn't say anything about higher food prices. It says no food. Well, of the other nine dreams I have that have all been given this year, not a one of them. 
said that it was just food getting up and going more expensive. Yes, several of them said it went up six times. But many of them said no food. Okay, that means you better get you some food. I saw people waiting for what seemed like hours standing in line, not in cars. Why weren't they in cars? Because the suitcase nukes fried all of the computer chips and the cars and the houses. That means that not only is there no electricity in the house, but even if they had electricity, the computers didn't work. And even if they could get the doors open on their cars, it means the cars wouldn't start. And I've got several other people that have seen dreams or visions of the same thing. People standing in lines, not in cars. Now, this is a real big confirmation. Okay, we ought to be saying like, ding, 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 ding. We better pay attention to this one. I saw ships and ports. What are we seeing right now? I just got an article the other day, 62 ships. Now, these are not small ones. These are the ones that have the big containers. I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 containers. How many containers on each one of those ships? There's 62 of them here a couple of weeks ago. Setting just off the port of Los Angeles. Setting. Setting idle. You're hearing on the news almost every day, oh, yeah, we're trying to get this bottleneck. Well, it's it's a man-created bottleneck. It's caused by the Molonk and Ball worshippers. Why? Because they don't like to see the buddies rounded up and arrested, and they're afraid. And so this is part of their blackmail. This is part of their threat. If you do this, we'll shut down all of the products coming into America. That's part of it. And, of course, another one of the threats is the suitcase nukes. I saw ships in the ports. This is happening now. On the east and the west coast, sitting idle. Happening now. There was nothing moving at sea. Nothing. Well, we're not that bad yet. But again, we're praying. I saw a headline that said, Baltic Dry Index Dead. Okay, that means nothing is moving globally. We're not there yet, but you let suitcase nukes go off and we'll be there. They said nothing was moving in trade around the world. I noted there were no Christmas tree lights this December. What are they saying right now? They're saying, well, this is going to interrupt our Christmas. They're saying, if you want Christmas presents, you better buy them right now. So, I mean, this is happening now as we speak. So if you have some friends that are skeptical, show them this. This is 2020, and here it is. It's, it's in the news. We'll be right back with more after this. Hello again, this is The Watchman. Please join us each week for an exciting and inspirational podcast dealing with angel encounters, heavenly visitations, near-death experiences, as well as modern-day prophecies that are relevant to us today. So tune in each week and share it with your friends. After all, they could use a little inspiration in their life, too. That's the Watchman on the Wall podcast, and now you can find us on YouTube. We return you now to Stan Johnson with his overview and commentary on the Dana Coverstone dreams. No sales mentioned Christmas lights, no Christmas displays, Santa Claus, Easter, Christmas type things going on. It was a great sadness over the land. People seemed to be very dazed and very confused. I continue to see shuttered property. People in homes wearing coats. Why coats? Because electricity's off. And there's nothing heating their home. Wearing coats, closed curtains. Why closed curtains? Because they're afraid, because there's a bunch of bad people outside. Con- a, con- a consistent vision. People inside their homes looking out what's going on. When I look at people outside of their currents, uh, cur- uh, looking out of their curtains, I see more of this dark gray snow stuff on the road. This is the second dream seeing the dark gray snow stuff, the fallout. So it's two dreams showing it. Again, we got to pray against those suitcase nukes, brothers and sisters, or they're going to hit. It wasn't pure uh, snow, like after a fresh snowfall. Well, it was fallout, okay? I saw headlines reading, Nationwide outages plague the Southwest. Why? Because the suitcase nukes fried all the electrical things, so there's not any electricity, and that means there's probably not natural gas flowing through the pipes either. Probably cars not starting because their computer chips got fried, and you can't get new computer chips. They can't even get new computer chips for the new cars they're building. 
Another headline said, Americans don't know who's to blame for the darkness. Why? Because they don't know that those suitcase nukes were actually made by the Russians back in the 80s, secreted into our nation back in the late 80s, early 90s, and hidden there years ago by the Molo and Kambal worshippers so they would have blackmail, saying, you let us do what we want to do, or, just like he said, we rule this country or this, this world for thousands of years, we'll destroy it rather than give it up, unquote. Some of the darkness stretched into Canada. It stretched north into Canada, but it was not everywhere. Then I saw vultures with food hanging out of their mouth. These vultures were heavy and fat with rotting food hanging out of their mouths. Why do they have plenty of food? I'll tell you why. Because the electricity went off two or three days later. All of the food in the freezers and refrigerators reached room temperature. So everybody had to gorge for a few days and eat it off before it went bad. But it, it obviously went bad, so they had to throw it out. And so that's why you're seeing vultures having a bunch of food hanging out of the mouth. The, the vultures had heyday. I saw depression as a creature with a face mask and a smile, but was choking people, pushing them down to the ground. Then I saw the St. Louis Arch, people standing under it, expensive watches and business suits. And I saw them with nuclear suitcases. Again, Coverstone didn't know about the suitcase nukes then. He just hear them from God. But this is what, the third example of this? So we should be paying attention. Now let's jump to September 26. The leader, now, I'm, I'm skipping a whole lot of this because it's a long one. I'm going to get right to the point. The leader of the good horse has declared, time to engage. That's what, he's, that's what the Lord is telling us right now. It's time for the Christians, time to engage. It's time to go to spiritual war, not guns and, and, and bullets, but on our knees. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not signs protesting. But the mighty through God are they pulling down the strongholds, loosing the angels to do warfare. Our battle takes place on our knees, my brothers and sisters. That's where we get our victory. Every single one of them was needed for the fight. It's saying every one of us is needed in this spiritual battle. This leader wasn't just begging. He was commanding them, saying, this is the way. Here it is. Here's the way. We see. The Bible says this is the way. This is the way. Walk ye in it. So the angel is telling us specifically to pray. That's what it's saying. No other way you can get around it, okay? This leader wasn't just begging. He was commanding them, saying, this is the way. Here's what you have to do. You must fight. You must fight this battle. You must go with us. Get ready. We're going to lead the way. Follow behind us. The good horsemen went up and down, giving the strategy, saying every single one represented must fight, meaning all Christians must fight this spiritual battle now. The people sitting on the hill continued to just sit and watch. Who's that? That's talking about... The Christian, so they just sit and watch the battle and pay no attention to what was going around them or the serenity. Suddenly, the ragtag army, that's, that's the Christians that aren't praying. The ragtag army, those who refused to fight, those who sat watching the battle appeared, a group of 20 of the evil army. They snuck up behind them very carefully. The evil army had swords, battle axes, large clubs closed in with total surprise, meaning there's a total surprise coming to the church, coming to the sleepy church. In total surprise, they attacked and literally beheaded five of them before they even knew what was happening. The ragtag army, or the backslidden Christians, were all dead corpses. Corpses beheaded people who had no armor or swords who refused to fight. What does that mean, no armor? It means they don't understand. They don't put on the full armor of God every day. Now, as a confirmation, this comes to us from Demetri Dudman. He actually told me this one in person as we were driving around back in, I think it was February of 1987, 1987. One night, <clears throat> while in Oregon, I dreamed the sky was getting dark. Suddenly it turned pitch, bar pitch dark. It was as if the whole world had gone dark that moment. All the people were in a frenzy, screaming, disoriented. Some people, after some time, we heard the sound of an army approaching. Uh, that's talking about right now. We hear an army approaching. Soon, we saw them coming out of the black mists. They were dressed in black, except one. That one seemed to be their leader. He was dressed in a red robe with a thick black belt over his waist. On his head, he had a sign. As I looked, I saw that in his hand, he had the same kind of sharp spear as everyone else in his army. I'm Lucifer, he explained. I'm the king of this world. I've come to make war against the Christians. What does Revelation 18 say? He made war against the Christians and overcame them. I've come to make war against the Christians. 
It looked as though all the Christians were huddled together in one big group. Some began to cry when they heard this. Others began to tremble. Some just stood without saying anything, and Lucifer continued to speak. All of those that want to fight against my army and think that they can be victorious, go to the right. Those that fear me, go to the left. Only about a quarter of the group stepped to the right. All of the others went to the left. Now, who's the ones that went to the right? Those are the ones that know that they have been given power over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. They know who they are in Christ. They know that what comes out of their mouth is what happens, not what Lucifer does. Jesus gave us all power over serpents and scorpions. Only about a quarter of the group stepped to the right. All others went to the left. Then Lucifer ordered his army, okay, destroy those on the right. The, The army began to advance quickly and surrounded the Christians on the right. As they began to close in on us, a powerful light appeared and encircled us. Then the angel of the Lord spoke and said, Take out your swords and fight. Defend yourself. Be victorious over the army. What swords? A man said. The word of the Lord is your sword. So the angel answered, and we understood what the angel meant. We began to quote verses from the Bible. Suddenly, as if we were one voice, we began to sing a song. Our voice thundered so loudly that the dark army began to retreat in fear. They did not have the courage to come against us anymore because they had swords. They had verses memorized. Lucifer then, filled with rage, turned to those on the left, you, who all of your life have been trying to please two masters. Because you cannot stand against me, I have the power to destroy you. He ordered his army to attack. It was a total massacre. The ones on the left could not defend themselves one by one. They all fell. This killing seemed to go on for a long time. After a while, we could actually smell the stench of the dead. Why could they not be protected also, someone asked. The angel said, because all of their life they have been lukewarm. Because of their hypocrisy, why were they lukewarm? I'll tell you one big reason. They believe that a pre-trib rapture is going to save them. They don't believe in Jesus. They believe in the pre-trib rapture. Because all of their life they have been lukewarm. Because they're of hypocrisy. The true church has been blasphemed. They have brought disrespect to the word of God. They were not clean. We continued to look as we saw the sun coming over the horizon. The black clouds clouds began to break up. Then they disappeared. Only one was left, which was Lucifer, and his army stood. Lucifer looked at me, shaking his fist, saying, I will destroy even you, even if I have to throw my spear at you from here. Then the cloud disappeared, too. I looked around and began to see faces I began to recognize. I strengthened me greatly. I awoke. The first thing I thought that I had was this had been the last fight of the devil against the church, meaning we are now in this fight. That's what the angel is speaking to Coverstone here. He's saying we are now in that fight. That's what he's saying. Back to Coverstone, October 20, 2020. A house divided against itself shall not stand. This story is of the cheating surrounding the November 3rd, 2020. I can't say the word. You know what I'm talking about. I saw the man I'd seen the previous dream standing at the place where the president gives the State of Union address. He tapped the microphone three times and stated in a loud voice, A house divided against itself shall not stand. The emphasis was on the word shall. He then pushed the microphone down and walked to the door in the rear of the room flipped off the light switches, slammed the door shut, meaning the judgment has been set, just like the angel spoke to Dimitri. The fall of America has been set. Now, another one, cover stone. Now it's up to you, church. The man of the group of the believers turned to me and identified himself as the christ top man, and he said, I will brace you against the demons. Just believe and do not fear them. I saw shimmering of the great lakes, and water appeared to go out of the bowl, skipping, An earthquake under the central point of the area of the Great Lakes. Skipping again. I saw Rocky Mountains trembling on the coast in California shaken. It was as if I was sanding on part of the top of the Rocky Mountains. And skipping again. I saw the face of George Washington speak from the mountain saying, Hold the fort. Toe the line. Fight. Many of these dreams from both Dimitri and Coverstone is saying, Brothers and sisters, we got to fight we got to fight, and the fighting is our prayers, our fasted prayers. The clouds covered the Mount Rushmore Monument again, and the sun came out and started to rain. I saw the Christ top man walking along, saying, Now, it's up to you, church. 
meaning that the Lord has done what he can do, what he is willing to do. And now it's up to us. It's what comes out of our mouth that determines what happens in our nation. January 15th. Now, look at that day. That's important because when is January 15th? This is just before the inauguration. Now, let's jump to November 4. Cover stone again called Hold the Wall. This is explaining why some things have happened that are bad. I saw a bunch of people holding a wall and pushing against the wall like they were supporting it. Behind the wall was a large amount of water, and I saw hundreds of thousands of people holding that wall, pushing up the wall. I could see the wall shifting and moving. Sometimes the wall would push back, and people would brace it, so it's a tug of war against the wall. Some of them would answer their cell phones, and they would ring, and they would get distracted. One person stepped away from the wall, answered the phone, started talking, forgetting about praying. See, this is telling us what has happened. This is telling us why not all of the things that Kevin Storm warned us about to pray for, to pray against, He's explaining why some of them have come to pass. It's because some people forgot to pray. They got busy. They got caught up in the cares of the world. Fewer people holding the wall made all the others have to rebrace themselves. In other words, there's got to be enough people pushing against the wall. And that wall, let me just tell you, that water's the devil coming after us. Now let's jump to January 9, 2021, called Plumline. So in this case, the angel came to him and showed him he is going to shake Wall Street. Now, the next thing he showed him, that he's going to shake the capital, meaning the government. Now, here's the point. Then he came to him and he said, I am also going to shake the church. I warned them. I, then he shook the church even more aggressively than he did Wall Street or the Capitol building, either the, the, the business or for the government. He didn't church, shake the church harder because he said, I warned them. I told them. People like Dimitri and others. Some ran away as fast as they could, throwing down their Bibles, not looking back, leaving as fast as they could, even the pastors running out with them. They were saying, I never knew him. They were denying Jesus. I don't know him. That's not my church. They were embarrassed for being part of the church. <laughs> they had been shaken. They were walking away. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm about to bring some really hard times on America. Don't walk away. Stay braced. Stay faithful. Now let's jump to the positive part of it. Daniel Coverstone again, January 20, 2021. I think, look at the date, January 20, 2021. I saw a nursery with hundreds and hundreds of babies. All about to be, they were all about to be saved. A lot of fruit is coming. A great harvest is about to arrive. He says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. I saw thousands of frightened people, newborn Christians coming to the kingdom, thousands of day-old babies, new converts into the faith. There's about to be an incredible harvest and an incredible amount of fruit brought into the kingdom, but it's not going to be enough people to disciple and help encourage and teach and lead and guide them. I want to be part of that great end-time revival. I want to be part of pointing a lot of people to Jesus. Right now, though, right now our job is to pray. Pray that things don't get too bad, too harsh, because they're about to get really, really tough. Hello again, this is The Watchman. Please join us on our new video channel called Encounters from Beyond the Veil. It's the same exciting content as our audio podcast, but in a shorter, but yet a video format. Also, please subscribe so you won't miss any of our episodes. That's Encounters from Beyond the Veil, exclusively found on YouTube. Well, thanks again for listening, and if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. Also, give us a like. We welcome any comments or suggestions you might have. We also ask you to subscribe so that you will be notified of all our future episodes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on the Watchman on the Wall podcast. Mm-hmm.